Joining us on this episode of Musical Chairs, we have a new guest who's sure to entertain and inspire you. Hear their story, feel their passion, and join them in their journey as we put them in the chair. Now, please welcome your hosts, Lisa Berry and Eric Lambier. Well, good day, everybody. Hello, welcome to Musical Chairs. I'm your host, Lisa Berry, and and I'm your host, Eric Lambier. Welcome to the show, everybody. Hello, America. Hey, hello, hello. Well, today's a fun little show because for, it's the first time that, Eric, you and I are not in the studio together. We are not. No, I'm from my house and you're from your house. <laughs> See, I've, um, if, if anybody's been listening to Light of Living, I've shared that I've, I've moved. So we're, we're trying to settle in and we've got a little bit of distance between us. But uh, you know what? I already missed you, Eric. I wish I was there. I, oh. I think we'll do this. One time. <laughs> well, that's great. Or we'll go to your house because apparently your house is on a lake now, which is absolutely yeah. beautiful. So maybe we'll do it from your house. That would be that would yeah, be fantastic. Right. <laughs> Look forward to right. that. Yeah, and you know what? Actually, while we're, we're inviting guests to my place, why don't we even say, like, you know, we were trying to think we should plan a drum circle. And I think, you know, up here at the lake would be, it's on the island. <laughs> we should, we should, anybody right now, if you are interested in doing a drum circle or want to, we're in the Ontario, in Canada, Ontario region, um, that would be fun just to hear from you. If you, if you do drum circles, you want to do some, what else, what other kind of live music bands? You're, you're the live, you're the festival guy. <laughs> Well, exactly. It would be great to have people, if they're interested in the drum circle, just go to our new, and we do have a new fan page, don't we, Lisa? Yeah. Musical Chairs. Yay. Now, do they find it, just to clarify for me, is it Musical Chairs on the air, or is it Musical Chairs? Well, if you just, yeah, go to Facebook, punch in Musical Chairs. It's our, it's our fan page, but I think we have a fun little at sign, um, and it's Musical Chairs is on the air. Oh, yeah. And that's our tag thingy, and and Perfect. what you usually say because you have your famous line that we've got to somehow embed in there. That you love to say, "Yes, hear you there," which is good because it's radio and all that kind of thing. But yes, hear you there, folks. But so that'd be a good place if you're interested in hearing something. And if you have suggestions for the show, definitely let us know. Comment on the page, like the page, and share the page anywhere you possibly can. <laughs> so. It really is. And, you know, Liz, we do want to hear that because I know what we're going to be featuring an artist today. We're hoping that she's going to join us a little later. But in the meantime, we are going to get to play some uh, some amazing songs from her. She's she's really making some waves in the industry. But um, but we do like to hear from you. We've heard a little bit. We've got a couple comments there going on. But I think I get 25 or 30 comments about people who – now, people are also saying that they really like us to interview people who are already passed away. So maybe we'll do tributes. Oh, Eric, did you hear that Journey is now picking up residency and doing like a nine-week a nine week thing in, in Vegas? I did not know that. That would be a great thing for them to do, actually. I'd love to see that. Yeah. That would be amazing, <laughs> for sure. That's a great thing for them. But, well, yeah. You, oh. Well, and the thing – going back to what you said about people requesting, yeah, there were a lot of people <laughs> – we have to do a long distance interview with some of the people they suggested on our musical chairs. But, uh, you know, anybody you'd like to maybe have, me, we can contact. We have enough likes for it. You know, they would probably love to come on the show so we can, uh, we can have that too. So it'd be awesome. Yeah, lots of support. We love it. Well, as Eric and I yeah. really do love interviewing actual people, but we also love listening to new music. So, Eric, this is so, you, you know, you are just so, like, your life is enriched with music, and you seem to have this knack for remembering artists and what they do and who plays and what and everything. But, but the conscious community and the more like this, the um, yoga music to you and all that is a little bit new. And we are going to be introducing somebody who totally was in the pop industry um, and her quite the history of her family stuff, which I'll get you to share. But I want to ask you first, just before we jump into that, is is how are you feel like how do you feel just broadening your listening experience of of more like spiritual music and conscious music? I'm interviewing you now. <laughs> I, I get I, I'm in the chair, folks. <laughs> yeah, I you know I love, I, I love I love 
You know, I love all kind of music. And you know, when I was being grow, when I grew up, when I was being grown up, oh, that sounds scary. <laughs> when I grew up, there was, uh, you know, I grew up in a, you know, kind of a church environment too. Now, you know, so when you get, you know, everything from hymns to gospel music of different sorts, you're kind of in that anyway. And I was like. A lot of gospel music, like uh, How Great Thou Art, for instance. I mean, not to get too much mm-hmm. religious kind of stuff here, but so, This Little Light of Mine, you know, Swing Low, oh. Sweet Chariot, all those kind of songs. But I kind of grew up around it, but, but now being introduced to our artist who is coming on today, hopefully she calls in. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to play a bunch of her. We're actually going to play a lot of her songs today. We thought we'd expand that. Instead of playing one or two songs, why not we actually do a whole hour and let them really shine? And uh, her music is absolutely fantastic. I've listened to the album from stem to stern, as they say, <laughs> and uh, I really, I really love, I love, I love the arrange, I love the arrangements, I love the lyrics, I love her voice, uh, how they approached yeah. it. So I was just really interested in asking her about some of the people she's worked with. Which you can mention. Well, I love that you said. I love that you said. Um, uh, just gonna let her shine because you just finished saying this little light of mine and let it shine. So that was really cute. But <laughs> all right, well I'm gonna Absolutely. let you do your 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 other little famous line and and sound effect that you love to do. So today today we are featuring and who is in oh. the chair? Where's our squeeze? Oh, here comes the drum roll, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I got. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and, and then our ch- our chair squeaks. Our it is yeah. the wonderful, amazing, beautiful, spiritually evolving Donna Delory. Woo! Don- Donna <laughs> Delory, and that's great. Woo-hoo. Absolutely great Yay. album. I'm really delving into her material, which is fantastic. So. Yes, yes. Now we we have to do a little bit of a backup here because um, Donna Delory has had qu- like quite the interesting history and it doesn't just start with her it actually precedes her so it actually goes back to her grandfather and her father but eric would you like to share that just a quick smidge about um grandfather uh, father because they're both and everything and then we'll jump into well donna <laughs> yes uh i don't know too much about it i i just know that you know with with the bio i thought um it's al delory was her her father was part of the wrecking crew and if people see that documentary on Netflix, it's a great show about the the musicians that played behind uh, a lot of the 60s bands, that kind of thing. Uh, you got Dan it. Campbell was part of it as well. And uh, um, so, and he was responsible for some other things. So we're just going to keep that, though, just for yeah. a bit, Lisa. I think we should keep it just okay. in case she gets on the line. I don't want to sp- spill all oh, the beans about right. it. Please. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I'll start off with her with her thing right now. We go Donna Delory, Madonna's longtime backup singer and dancer, and a devotional diva in her own right. Grew up in the musical family, which now we're going to jump over that and sh- share that. But in 1993, Delory made her debut as a solo artist with a self-titled album, um, and that was MCA Universal Records, hitting number one in Japan with the single "Praying for Love" and landing in the <laughs> U.S. top ten dance charts with just a dream. And since then, she's recorded a string of devotional world music albums, including Bliss, that was in 2001, In the Globe, 2003, The Lover and Beloved, 2004, Sky is Open, 2006, like these are tons of albums, Sanctuary, 2008, Remixes, um, 2010, and The Unchanging, 2013. She has done session work with Bette Midler, Carly Simon, Leonard Cohen, Selena and Belinda Carlisle and has an enraptured audiences at yoga music festivals. That's why I really want to talk to her like the Bhakti Fest and Wonderlust and her infinitely expressive, breathtakingly beautiful voice. Now I'll go into her latest album and then we can start um, playing some songs there, Eric, but Delory's latest album, here in heaven, because that's when we're featuring today, 2018, is already receiving press in the U.S., U.K., and Australia. It's absolutely gorgeous, and the yoga, divine mother, and self-transformation inspired lyrics are mostly in English, with a few mantras sprinkled in for good measure. The album features musicians who have worked with Jewel, Ray Charles, David Bowie, Beck, and Nelly Furtado, among others, and was mixed by studio whiz Kevin Killen, whose credits include U2, Peter Gabriel, Kate Bush, and Shakira. Woo! Wow. 
And I think Elvis no. Costello was in there somewhere. I thought I read Elvis Costello was one of his um, people as well. Yeah. So that's, that's a pretty that's a pretty good roster to have on your album. Yeah, like it just has this, this insane goes on and on and on, and um, and then just to finish up because she just got like this, just goes. It, it really, she, oh, I can't wait for her to talk to her because she's helped to um, bring experiences to people. Because you know when you go play these um, yoga festivals, we got to get you to a yoga festival, Eric. Uh, <laughs> yes, I love it. Yeah, and it is. It just the energy is just. You know, it's like any kind of concert, but the um, festivals and concerts, they just have this incredible energy about them. We are actually going to play Heaven First in about two more minutes. But um, just to continue, it says here, over the course of nine um, realized tracks, Delory weaves a myriad of strands of world music, contemporary pop, sacred sounds, and an introspective song craft into one mesmerizing musical experience. It is her most personal autobiographical record today and also the most musically ambitious with songs paying poignant tribute to her late parents open-hearted oh my god i don't know this word pains what was that word eric pains how do you spell it beauty of nature and love p-a-e-a-n-s pains could be typo pains (laughs) this is when we are really (laughs) vulnerable live on air how do you say this word (laughs) Ah, to the beauty of nature of love and inspiring messages about finding heaven on earth. And that's actually something we will be talking because I like that. I really want to talk about that one. Um, and being one with the divine and finding truth within. Like those are our three things that we are so excited to talk to her about. Um, as Whole Lifetimes observes here, yeah. heaven is um, a heart-soaring soundtrack for yoga, meditation, and everyday life. So, Eric, just when we wow. talk, kind of talk about heaven, did you, did you like that one? What, is that one of your favorite ones? Oh, I love Heaven. I love uh, I love the whole album, but Heaven's a is a great tune, and uh, um, it's just got great lyrics, got good rhythm, and uh, I love the string arrangement in it too. But uh, yeah, have a listen to the strings. It kind of reminiscent to me a little bit of Zeppelin, I gotta say. And it's more I really what I think it is from a musician point of view, is it uh, the same mode or scale, if you will. That Zeppelin used a lot, mm. which I think is a half okay. whole scale. Um, oh, okay. So, for those which I really like there. that kind of kind of scale, but the strings are really cool in this song. I, I really like them. And, uh, of course, uh, there's lots there. Oh, the other thing I liked was the and, and people have a listen. I think that's a djembe they're using on the bottom. And uh, lots of, lots, what I really love about the album, too, is there's just lots of, I guess, soundscaping is what they call it. And uh, just mm. a lot of Little things, like listen to it on headphones. Headphones are, are the key because it really, okay. things come in and out, especially her vocals and this kind of thing as well. The things come in and out and you have echoes going on and then you have shakers and all kinds of different instruments going on in the background. If you really listen, it's really cool that way. Really well produced. I okay, guess. so and, well, and we're going to jump in. And written, yeah, we'll talk about it a little bit after we come back, but we are going to be listening to Heaven right now, and everybody listen to the strings and the soundscape. All right, Donna Delore, Heaven. The skies 
Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Home Times. Namaste, friends. This is David Pramala Mitten. And we want to let you know that we will be in America and Canada this May. We'll be coming with our Wings of Mantra World Tour. Coming up the West Coast to Boulder, Santa Fe, Sedona, Scottsdale, Santa Barbara, L.A., Marin, Santa Cruz, San Jose, Escondido, Edmonds, and up to Canada to Victoria and Vancouver. You can find details on our website, davapramalmiten.com. Hope to see you there. Lots of love. Namaste. Own Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Imagine tapping into a power where you could access the ability to transform your views of money, success, happiness, and fulfillment. A power that you could unlock hidden talents, uncover new meaning, and amplify the significance of your purpose. Well, the feminine heart is the source of that power, intelligence, insight, and understanding. Join this new wave of women's leadership that's emerging. Be the woman who knows her greatest power to create goes well beyond the day-to-day -day striving for results. Be the woman who knows her true power to contribute to the world in significant ways is one that expresses her heart, enlivens her creativity, and elevates her spirit. Rise, amazing woman, rise. An amazing woman legacy book compiled by Marsh Engel, sharing the eight essential powers of the feminine from eight influential mentors, entrepreneurs, and change makers that will help you tap into that power. Rise, amazing woman, rise. 
Your legacy begins by leading with a feminine heart. Welcome back, everybody. Hello, Eric. We have Donna on the line. Awesome. <laughs> Donna Delore is here. Donna Delore, is- woohoo! <laughs> Woo-hoo. Hey guys! This is great. Hey, Hi, how are you? Hey, well, <laughs> Namaste, Namaste. We had a beautiful <laughs> intro with you. We're so excited that you're here, and and Eric led you, and he was like so excited to share the soundscaping and the strings uh, to your song Heaven There. Oh, thank Absolutely. you so much. I'm so excited because I just we just finished uh, shooting a video for that that's going to come out in a few weeks. So Ooh. it's a lot of like dancing and martial arts and, and like a big production. It's going to be Ooh. really fun. Ooh. Ooh, we'll share that with everybody. You know, I'm a bit of a delay folks. So I might, it's hard for me okay. to jump in occasionally. So. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, delay, was, delay, say, delay, delay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's what I was saying was the strings, whatever mode that is, I think it's a half hole mode or whatever that is. I'm a bit of a musician myself, so I, I love it. It's starting to sound a little Zeppelin-ish to me, <laughs> a little. So, Yeah, when we went in to record that, with, um, it's a string player named Stevie Black. Who, he plays every string instrument. So I go to his studio. Oh. He starts with a cello. And then and I said, I want, like, Indian kind of strings, because a lot of people, like, they send their songs to India to get strings done, and then they're sent back, you know, or they'll do it remotely. Oh. And and we just he just came up with that we came up with that line you know that that works so well amazing and and your vocal right. follows a lot of that too yeah it was we started with the vocal and then we wanted to go around it yeah yeah ah, well the next one up we're going to be playing is the Sat Sari and we wonder if you could share just a little bit about introduce that song and what where that came from and how you feel about it. Well, the first the first mantra album I made was was signed to a company called Ajna Records, and another artist was Sada Satkar, Sada Satkar Khalsa, um, who's a beautiful artist and amazing Kundalini teacher practitioner. And this was a mantra that she chanted, and she wrote a piece of music around it. So ever since like 2003, 2004, I've been listening to it and it always resonated with me. That's how I usually um, will incorporate the mantras into my repertoire is something just deeply, the sound of it, you know, feeling tone and sometimes the music or I'll change the music to the to hearing a mantra, then I'll write my own music. But I kept trying to like make it work on an album ever since mm-hmm. The Lover and the Beloved, my first mantra album. And I finally sat down at the piano and I just took the chords and I and I moved them half time to the way that theirs were moving and then it, it worked for me. Um, oh. And I changed the arrangement. I wrote other sections to it and made it more like cosmic and mm. universal. Um, through galaxies we fly through supernova skies, just like dreamlike. And the whole piece about the undying truth, um, the love presence the divine that goes on and on that never that will never die will never change and that's a theme in a lot of my music so it Mm. it went perfectly i love the mantra it's a little more for people to learn when they come and chant with me live if they don't know it Uh, yeah so beautiful (laughs) you know actually eric and i were talking about excuse me sorry is that hindi what what is that language it's it's um it is. It is a Kundalini mantra, so it's Guru Mukh. I mean, it's um, yeah. It's. I didn't the, know what the language it's was. It's one of the. It? It's beautiful. Yeah, it's Guru Mukh. I mean, it's. When you talk about this, the um, how you took this song and you've been, it's been rolling around with you since your first mantra album. Um, that's you mentioned a lot about spiritual evolution, and I feel like that song came through the spiritual evolution. You hung on to it, and you're like, "This is going to work," I, you know. And then it, you finally had that connection with it, like the higher music of it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know what? To me, all the mantras and the music are it's it's kind of all has the same. It all has the same meaning to me. Um, but cool. there are different, sometimes there's different aspects of the truth and different names 
Yeah. You know, all the different words are they all point to the same place. Which oh. is just identifying with the divine, rising mm. to the light, um, and just super Very positive cool. music, which I know that you guys are about that. So No, we just love it's it. Absolutely. It's beyond words, you know. Sometimes it's hard to even explain it. It's something you yes, all of for sure. you just have to <laughs> feel it. Yeah. Well, speaking of Beyond Words, we're actually going to play it. So everybody would love for you to enjoy um, Don Delory's Sat Seri song and just enjoy. Just let it take you up. Rise to the light. <laughs> mm-hmm.
arrangement of the whole song. I like how the, the rhythm underneath goes, and I'm a big bass guy, so he's got some really cool bass licks in there, too. But also, obviously, your vocals are just stunning. I love it. Thanks, you guys. Thanks thanks so much. You know, <laughs> I reconnected um, a, a, you know, a couple of years ago with Belinda Carlisle, who I used to sing with, who who is has been studying Kundalini yoga for years, you know, and I didn't know that. Been, That's great. She became a fan of my music like years ago from The Lover and the Beloved, and, and she only pretty much listens to mantra music. Mm-hmm. And we reconnected, and I sang with her at an event last year, and I sang. She made a, a mantra album, which is beautiful. And I asked her if she would come and sing on one of my songs, so I thought, and so I wanted to put her on the remix of this, which is actually like going to be a more acoustic down mix Ooh. of that theory. She came in okay. and did, like, the responses and sang with me. Now, she, of course, could pronounce the mantra better than me because she's been doing it longer. And she blew me away on her vocals. And I've been, like, I'm working on this track right now. I just put tablas on it and acoustic guitar. So taking away some of the electric and just going very acoustic with it. Mm. And then ending, the whole song is going to just be, the end is just going to be our voices chanting together. Oh, it wow. is so amazing. Magical. I can hardly wait to hear that. I can hardly wait to yeah, hear that. Yeah, when can we hear that? And we want to do like a video for it. Of course, it'll be all white. <laughs> you know, wearing white and light. And anyway, that's a vision I have. So you can, you can, uh, when can we see that, that with me? And I'm wearing all white right now. That's amazing. No, I have white pajama pants. <laughs> the light day. No. Um, so yeah. that one, so we can expect a remix out soon. And um, Eric, do you want to ask about our next song? You can get a little info how that was all came about. What's the next song? Yes, yeah, so the next the Eric? next song we're going to be do, doing is uh, our playing from your album is Piano Man. And I have to say, I just love the song once again. I really, what really touched me about this is, I'm assuming you're playing piano on the song, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, so the question I wanted to ask you. Sorry, sorry, we are on a delay. Sorry about that. uh The question I wanted to ask you was, did you do that live off the floor? Meaning you played piano and sang at the same time? Yes. And you know what was really funny is that I just had the piano tuned and we put it in my guest house, but it was kind of in the corner. There were all of these, like, there were all these overtones. I couldn't decide if I wanted to, like, I usually record with headphones, 
but I wanted to hear the room. But the piano, it's an old piano that my grandfather brought, bought for my grandmother as a wedding present. My grandfather was an upright bass player, was a musician wow. and a singer on Broadway and everything. He got my dad to be a musician. So it goes deep in the family. Now, this piano has been since like the 20s, okay, in our family. And it's very heavy. It's a, it's a Francis right. Bacon old antique piano. So mm. it was so loud, and I was trying to play so soft so I could hear myself in the room. And and I would do – I went in and by myself late at night, and I just pressed record on my Pro Tools, and I did a few takes. And I was just trying to really, like, talk to my dad, which I wrote that song after my dad had passed, and I was trying to just – tell my dad how I was feeling and it was a way of me processing losing him it was a big healing piece for me to really get to that place of like where did all that music go where did all that talent of my dad go like years and years of his knowledge for music he was a composer he was brilliant and I'm like where did it go where does it go you know and then I'm like oh here and I can tap into it and I always grew up like my dad was a piano player I was the singer you know I wasn't Right. I was the singer because my dad was so great, you know, at piano. Mm. And then I realized I always kind of gave myself a trip about that. Like, I'm not good enough, you know, with right. playing piano. Right. I wasn't trained as a musician. I came up singing naturally and dancing, and I was a performer. But later on, I had to just realize, no, I'm a creator. This is an instrument for me. This helps me write. And it's not about being good or not. Just – it's about loving it. It's about yeah. loving the music and letting it come through. For you. sure. And I realized this is my spiritual practice, you know, part of my practice. Could you, the song could you just let about, people know in about 30 seconds yeah. who your dad was? I mean, we sort of touched on it, but I didn't really get into it. I'd rather hear from you. <laughs> yeah. So my dad, his name is Al Delore, and he is a legendary musician, came up, you know, in the 50s, was playing with, like, Latin bands in Vegas, and he's from, born, raised in Hollywood, in Van Nuys, LA, you know, outside of Los Angeles. He, his his father was a musician and grandfather, and he was raised to be a musician and ended up being a famous studio musician with Phil Spector, with the Wrecking Crew. He played on, like, all these records in the 60s, like Mamas and the Papas, um, Pet Sounds with the Beach Boys, Beach Boys, yeah. Beach Boys. A, with a, like Hal Blaine and, and all these famous musicians. He's in the in that um, documentary, The Wrecking Crew. Well, then he went on to become yes. a producer at Capitol Records, and he produced Glenn Campbell. All of his like really big hits. By the time I get to Phoenix and Wichita Lyman and um, so, like all those big hits then. Yeah. So I, I was growing up then, and my dad was like right. a, you know, a very successful producer and musician. Um, and then right. I got to grow up into that, and then I started singing. My dad brought me to a man who hired children singers professionally. Um, I started singing when I was about eight, nine years old. I did my first job, which was a dog. Oh, wow. Oh, I love that. <laughs> it was like, rest a because my dog's pretty special to me. You know, and I got the solo on That's that awesome. commercial. Oh, my God. That's and perfect. Like, you had to like audition and sing for this all these adults in the studio booth. Like you're out in the studio and then they're behind the glass, and you have to one by one sing it, and they're going to pick who's going to do the solo. Oh, wow. And so oh. very you know often when I was doing these jobs, I would get the solo, and so that was a long you know I got that recognition and I felt like I was good and um, and then that led me to being like in the studio and and I I could make a living doing that you know. And then I wanted to be an nice. artist, and then the whole thing continues. Um, but that's well, just I, in me. Yeah, we're actually going to play that song um, for your, the piano man. Um, and I just, and as we introduce it, as you just beautifully did, I just like to remind that you just said something so perfect. And in the beginning, when you were doing the solos, it was because you were getting the recognition. But I love that you made the comment, um, and I'm going to quote it: "Is it's not about being good or not; it's about loving it." And that was a very deep question you asked about, like, where Absolutely. does it all go? That's love. Great one. And that love is that love was right through that piano. And, and Eric, you're a piano player. You love, you have your piano forever. So I think that was really cool. That we, that story is so beautiful. And to to be able to get to hear the Absolutely. song right now is going to mean even more. <laughs> so, yeah, and everyone, if you guys yeah, like sure. this song, to go go look online at the video. The video was put together by Nick Aww. Spanos, who's my 
a video director photographer, okay. and it incorporates a lot of the footage and, and pictures from my dad's career. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, well, wow, thanks, Nick. Right. Oh, no, <laughs> All right, everybody, please enjoy Donna Delory's Piano Man. This piano you started playing Your little fingers grew up strong On this old ivory you found your freedom Your heart's passion, your soul song Hear the marks from your fingers remain as I play you sing the way I wish you could play one more song for me You brought me to life with your melody I'm happy for you now you're free again Piano man with my hand you keep playing At this piano I sat beside you You write your notes down I sing along The greatest gift you ever gave to me Was this beauty This life of song I can hear In the ringing on the keys I wish you could play one more song for me You brought me life with your melody I'm happy for you now You're free again Piano man with my Your fingers shake it, you played your last song I held you up here as the light came through you It is my honor to be your dream living on I can hear you calling me Saying babe, come I wish you could play one more song with me You brought me to life with your melody I'm happy for you, you're free again Can I man with my hands, you keep playing
Donna, thank you wow. so much for letting us share in your healing um, processing journey because that's um, we all just got to share in that with you. That was beautiful. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Kind of brought yeah, tears I, to my eyes. After, <laughs> oh my God! Wait till you guys see the video. It's like, yeah. it's crazy. Um, wow. The it just was captured so perfectly. But that night after I did that take. You know, I did a few takes, and I knew the one that I was going to use because I could, like, really feel my dad there. Mm -hmm. And I left – our guest house is where my studio is, so it's up on the top of the hill, and I had to walk down. And it's very – I live in Topanga Canyon, and it's very dark, so I could see the stars. And I just – my senses were so heightened, and this is what music does for me and for a lot of people. Yeah. I just looked up at the stars, and I felt such oneness with my dad and with all – with the universe, you know, I was like, oh, I really God, felt that song. When I, when I, I will never to forget it. that. When I listened to the song, I really, it, and I, as I listened to it again, I just felt, you, first of all, caught the spirit of the song, but also your dad's spirit in it. So I just love it. It was great. Beautiful. Thanks so much, you guys. Yeah, okay. it's, so, <laughs> it's so important to, um, to have that yeah. healing, you know, with our, in that transition yeah. with our parents and with, you know, and animals and things. stuff, yeah. Which well, all yeah. Yeah. well, Donna, you had mentioned earlier, I know Eric was going to ask you about festival and stuff, which we, we want to ask you, but you had mentioned that people can learn how to chant with you. So my, I want to find out, making sure if there are listeners, like if they if they would love to do that, do they come to your, your home? Do you do this as lessons or do you go out and travel and do circles? Well, I think at, at my events and, you know, the thing is that when I first made my the first mantra CD I made, I only, I knew like three mantras at the time. <laughs> right. And I like to keep things really simple <laughs> because so much of it is the sound vibration. Right. Yeah. And even on Govinda Jaya Jaya on my first record, um, you know, there might be a word I might take and repeat it over and over again. And it's mm -hmm. with this intention and it doesn't have to be complicated, you right. know? And I think I, I really give that, you know, when I do a festival or something, it might be Aham Prema, which is I am divine love, or Soham, Soham, Satnam, Satnam, mm -hmm. um, I am truth. And it's usually, you know, I bow to this. I, um, It's this ultimate humility. And um, yeah. Om Namah Shivaya, you know, I like the really simple mantras and Guru Om, Guru Om, finding the Guru within. Mm -hmm to start there, you know, and I love to get people, of course, singing and harmonizing and just that one that's feeling, fantastic. feeling bringing people oneness, into your also show. Really for sure. heart, height, heightening the senses and the, yeah. you know, everyone listening to one another. And that's a huge, it's a huge piece to really listen to one another. Well, oh, Eric, I and, think she actually just answered my last question because we were only going to get to play one more song. And I was like, oh, we should ha ask you to choose between listen and talk to Mary. But now you just said the word listen so many times. I feel like that should be the one. Right. <laughs> and and listen was like I went into my daughter's public school third grade because there's no school. I mean, there's no music there, of course. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm bringing oh. the music. So yeah. I picked up a guitar and started like Great. playing guitar again because I couldn't bring a piano into the classroom. <laughs> And I started, like, my mediocre guitar playing. This song was originally written by Avesa and Maddie Love, who are friends of mine. And then same kind of thing. I kind of took it and rearranged it and, and wrote more to it um, to make it more of a kind of like a more of a song, pop song format um, structure and brought it to the kids. And it was a true test because when I taught the kids the song, they loved it. And the song wow, is interestingly enough called Listen. And it was so cute. One of the tools that when I went in there, the teacher taught me this, the, the word waterfall. You just say waterfall, and that's when they're quiet. Mm. So, I, of course, oh. I was singing waterfall, and they would be quiet. And then I, because I didn't have the tools to teaching like 30 children, you know, at once while they're like wild and crazy. So I had to learn that. And also just the beauty of teaching them. And then we, we wrote a song together after that. So I'm going to continue on with that, working with the children in the school. There's also, of course, a video with the children that are on the record. And you guys will hear these children from the third grade class at Topanga Elementary School mm -hmm. on this song. And it's magical, and I love it so much. And um, 
it's got a real universal message, of course. Listen to the sound of your heart. Listen to the voice of your soul, but then listen to the sound of the mother. Listen to this. To listen to each other's hearts, and um, and yeah. rise up together. Oh. Well, um, as Eric and I are just so grateful and so thankful that you were able to share this time with us, and and we're going to play the song as we lead out of our show. But um, I wanted to take this time, and I know Eric did, to say just truly thank you for sharing your gifts and your music with us and this time. And the owners of Ohm Time State Everything Network Station Magazine, they just love you, Christopher and Leonie. They want, and I want to share that with you that they just love your songs. <laughs> Thank you so yes, much, you guys, you for your so support much. and the great work you're doing, your open hearts and your enthusiasm. And you guys inspire me to – I'm going to go make more music today. Oh, so beautiful. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, thank you. That's fantastic. And thank Thanks, you once Eric. again. Okay, I love your album. I'm going to check out a lot more of the music, too. <laughs> yes, and the videos. So everybody, yeah, Donna you guys. Yeah. yeah, check out the videos, DonnaDelore.com. You guys, I'll be doing some tour dates. If you guys want to get on my newsletter for my touring and events, that's at DonnaDelore.com. You can sign up, and um, and we'll stay in touch. Yes, absolutely. Fabulous. Okay, we're going to let our listeners just truly enjoy. It's Donna Delore's Listen, and that's how we shall say goodbye to everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks, Eric. Namaste. Goodbye, America. Take care. Thank you, Donna. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.